Okay, welcome back into this message. This is actually a continuation of the last message I did. Really, we can call it a part two on what God has for those of you who are in, who endure, for those of you who have been fighting. I ask that, or even constantly fighting, and you're saying you're tired of it. I ask that you go back and watch that message if you haven't already. But I left off by reading to you Revelation chapter 3, verse 10, where Jesus is speaking. He says, because you have kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which will come upon the entire earth, the entire world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. So he's saying, because you've endured, because you continue to fight for what is true, which is Jesus, he will keep you, he'll put you essentially in a bubble to, to make sure that what's affecting the earth, everyone else, does not affect you because you are his child, even if you're in a wilderness season. But some of you may be asking, or you're probably thinking, how is Jesus going to do that? You've been fighting and you're tired of it. How is he going to protect you? And what happens, because I talked about it in the last message, I want to share with you all as well what happens to those of you or those people who are following false doctrines or they're, they get, they've given up. They've allowed themselves to be swayed into whatever is out there in the world, whether that is false religions, false doctrines, whether that be crystals, whether that be new age, whatever that is, what happens to those who do not endure? And he tells us in Second Peter chapter uh, 2, and I want to read to you actually verse 9 all the way through 22. It's kind of lengthy, so stick with me here, but I promise you it's going to be um, life alter altering and it's going to be something that really pushes you forward and puts the fear of God in you to want to continue enduring. So chapter 2 verse 9, I'm going to start. It says, these things show that the Lord knows, I'm reading for the Common English Bible version, by the way, these things show that the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from their trials. So he's saying, it doesn't matter what you're going through, God knows how to pull you out of it. God knows how to go in, he knows where you live, actually, he knows your address, he knows where you hang out. You could be in the darkest alley, you could be rock bottom, you could be in a pit, you could be in the shadow of the valley of death. It does not matter. God knows where you are and he knows how to go get you and pull you out. It says, these things show that the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from their trials and how to keep the unrighteous for punishment on the day of judgment. And that's a very powerful statement within itself. He's saying he literally knows. God knows how to preserve the unrighteous specifically for that day of punishment. And this answers the question for a lot of you who, who look around you and you say, well, there's people who are very wicked. There's people who are doing very ungodly things. Why are they thriving? Why does it appear that they're thriving? First of all, they're being protected by demonic entities. They, they're in a contract with Satan himself, knowingly or unknowingly. And so Satan is literally protecting them, but God is saying he's allowing it to preserve them for the day of judgment so that they can be judged. They don't get to escape and go into a holding place right now. They don't get to escape and go into hell right now. He's preserving them so that that day of judgment will come for them and they get thrown into the lake of fire, which is worse than any hell could ever be. But he's saying this is especially true for those who follow after the corrupt cravings of the sinful nature and defy the Lord's authority. He's saying this is true as well for those who follow after those who do those things, for those who allow themselves to get swayed into false doctrines. This is actually a warning for those who are dabbling into things that are directly against the word of God. I'm, I'm calling it out right now. This is a warning. This is actually second, uh, second Peter chapter 2. And it says, these reckless, brash people aren't afraid to insult the glorious ones. And usually these are those people, the, the word of God never lies, who are not afraid to come up against those who are Christian and are righteous and are keeping God's commandments and, and does follow the word of God and are enduring. Have you ever encountered someone who is directly going against God and it appears that they're thriving in life? And you are following the commandments of God. You're staying true to God's word. And it appears that you're going through a lot worse than they have ever been through. And it seems that they're mocking you. Jesus said, the word of God says, these reckless, brash people aren't afraid to insult the glorious ones. And, it's, and it holds true. Yet angels who are stronger and more powerful 
Don't use insults when pronouncing the Lord's judgment on them. These false teachers are like irrational animals, which means that they say things that are irrational. Mere creatures of instinct born to be captured and destroyed. What does that mean? That means that usually those who do not follow in the path of God's word, they are after instant gratification because all they care about is gratifying the flesh and the here and now. They don't care about what happens to them after they're not here. And if they do care, it doesn't hold much power over what they want right here and now. So they move off of instinct and they're very irrational, irrational in the things that they do. And it, it'll, it may appear like they are rational or like they are thinking long-term when you first come in contact with them or when you're communicating with them. But if you just watch their actions and even God searches their heart, everything is done for instant gratification. How can I, how can I gratify the flesh in the here and now? And he says, they slander what they don't understand. So in other words, he's saying, really, and, you know, it talks about this, I believe it's in 1 Corinthians, I could be so wrong, but he talks about, Paul talks about how those who are of the world, they don't understand spiritual things. So it's like you're talking to a brick wall with these people. But those who God, who God has given eyes to see and ears to hear, it's going to make sense to you. It's going to open up new revelation for you. It's going to propel you forward. But versus those who have allowed themselves to be swayed into false doctrine, and, and they're not wanting to come out of it, right? They have a spirit of pride in them. And for those who are teaching false doctrine, even worse, they don't understand. It, it, it doesn't make sense to them because in their mind, they're thinking, how can I gratify? How can I satisfy myself now? So the word of God doesn't make sense to them. And it says, and I, I want to make sure I didn't lose my place. And it says, in this way, they will receive payment for their wrongdoing. They even enjoy unruly parties in broad daylight. They are blots and blemishes, taking delight in their seductive pleasures while feasting with you. They are always looking for someone with whom to commit adultery, which means they're always looking for someone with whom to commit idolatry with, someone whom to idolize other things with, someone whom to worship other gods with. I can, that's a whole other, I can really go into that. That's a whole other message. And then it says, they are always on the lookout for opportunities to sin. And not only, I'm going to put this there, not only are they always on the lookout for opportunities to sin, but they're also on the lookout for opportunities to sin and drag you into it with them. And the Lord has a word for those too, who do get easily influenced and dragged into sin. And it says, they ensnare people whose faith is weak. This is why it's so important that you have to pray to God to give you the gift of faith. This is a prayer that I say on a daily basis. I have a very extensive prayer list. And one of my prayers on there is for God to give me the gift of faith, to pour an immeasurable amount of faith within me and give me the same uh, courage and confidence that Caleb and Joshua had. But people who do not have strong faith, they're very easily influenced by the things of this world. They're very easily ensnared into false doctrines. They're very easily ens ensnared into doctrines of demons. This is why faith is so important. It's impossible to please God without faith. And he says, it's according, according to your faith, it will be done unto you. Faith is a foundational, it's, it's a principle. You, you need it, you need it. So it says, they have hearts trained in greed. They are under God's curse. Leaving the straight path, they have gone off course following the way of Balaam, son of Besor. This is Balaam is the false prophet that was in the early Old Testament books. And it says, who loved the payment of doing wrong. But Balaam was rebuked for his wrongdoing. A donkey, which had no voice, spoke with a human voice and put a stop to a prophet's madness. So God is saying he doesn't even have to go down to stop a false prophet. He just sends a donkey. He just sends a messenger because it's so it's God is so above the things that are going on in the world. He cares more about what's going on within his body because he's coming back for a bride without a spot or wrinkle. He's not concerned with those who are of the world because they're going to do what they're going to do anyway. And he already knows where they're going. He's trying to clean up the church. And he says, these false teachers are springs without water, meaning they have the appearance of being a spring of water, but there is no water. There is no fruit. 
So imagine going up to a spring of water, trying to drink water and nothing's coming out. This is what happens to people who go to false teachers, who go to people who teach false doctrines, or who go to people who pretend to be Christian and, and people of God, but they're teaching strange fire. And yes, that's something that's happening now. And he says, <coughs> I'm so sorry. I wanna make sure I'm not losing my place. And he says, um, the underworld has been reserved for them. He's saying there's a place that he already knows where they're going. With empty self-important speech, they use sinful cravings and unrestrained immorality to ensnare people who have only just escaped life with those who have wandered from the truth. What does that mean? That means that when they talk, and this is how you spot a false prophet, a false teacher, a false anything. When they talk, they're saying a lot of nothing. They're saying a lot of words that seemingly are important, that are seemingly big words, but when you put it all together and try to make it produce fruit in your life, these words don't mean anything. And he's saying with empty self-important speech, speech that is really empty, it doesn't add any fruit to your life, but it makes them appear to be somebody when they're not. These false teachers promise freedom. They promise freedom, but they're not teaching the word of God. You cannot set anyone free absent of the word of God. So anytime you're listening to someone and they're not, they don't use scripture, they're not pulling from scripture, they're not, what they're saying doesn't align with scripture, they may not have to always say what's coming out of the word of God. But if you can't trace it back to scripture, if you can't align it with anything that's in the word of God, you have to question if they're truly from God, if they're truly a teacher, if they're truly a prophet of God, if they're truly an evangelist, if they're truly a pastor or a woman or man of God, you have to really question that. And he says, um, if people escape the moral filth of this world through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, then get tangled up in it again and are overcome by it, they are worse off than they were before. It would be better for them never to have known the way of righteousness than having to come to know it, to turn back from the holy commandment and trust it to them. This goes back to where it tells us, I believe it's in Matthew, where Jesus is telling us how there are those who get delivered and they, they go out into the world and they don't continue to fill themselves up with the word of God and God's Holy Spirit. And then there are demons that will come back to check and see if the house that they left is empty, swapped, and garnished. And they'll go and bring, they'll go and grab seven other spirits, more spirits that are stronger than the first that was in there. And they'll come back to dwell in that person. He's saying you'll be worse off than you were before if you come to know the truth of God, leave and go back into the world and try to come back. And he's saying, it doesn't mean, by the way, he won't accept you back because Jesus is married to the backslider. He's saying that it will be harder. Now, I was at verse 22. It says, they demonstrate the truth of the proverb. A dog returns to its own vomit and a wash so wallows in the mud. I know that was a lot, y'all. But God is really saying that for those who endure, for those who um, <laughs> endure um, and continue fighting and continue pushing, he has something for you. He'll literally place you in a bubble. He'll protect you for the things, the wicked things that are coming on this earth because you have chose the straight and narrow path and it's not easy. It's not an easy one. If it were easy, then everyone would be on it. It's not an easy one. But on the flip side of that, he's saying this is what will happen to those who don't endure. To those who not only don't endure, but to those who are leading those other, other people astray. <laughs> so I love you all. I want to leave you with that. It's really just a warning message and it's an um, encouraging message and it's a fruitful message for those who are in, in a stage and season in your life where you're fighting, right? And you're enduring, which again, endurance, enduring something is separate than having to suffer the consequences of your own sin. I talked about that in the last message, but this is really a, a message of encouragement for those who are enduring and also a warning message for those who are considering backsliding and for those who are dabbling in things that are not of God or for those who are listening to false teachers who do not rely on the word of God. So I love you all. I'll leave you with that. I'm always praying for you. Make sure that you go over the scriptures that I read on your own. And also remember, 
the journey through the wilderness course just opened up well it didn't really open up it's a wait list that you can get on if you get on the wait list you get more than half off there's a link below and there's also a link in the community tab you can read more about it in the community tab in my last post and you can read more about it on the page in the link that i'll put in the comments so in the description so i love you all i'm always praying for you make sure you share this there's many other resources for you below and i'll talk with you in the next message